So I want to invite uh, um, uh, Pastor Kosnas to share the word again. If you haven't been changed by the word ever since we started fasting and praying, I believe that God is going to touch you today. Just prepare your heart, open your heart, open your mind. Let everything else that is controlling us right now, let it just, uh, you know, just uh, 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 go to the grave in the name of Jesus so that the word will penetrate into our hearts and into our minds. Pastor Cosmas, we invite you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. No, it's been a wonderful uh, a few days of preaching the word, ministering to you people, and I, I know that the Lord has been blessing you because I can feel it and I sense it in my spirit. And I hope that even today, the Lord will surely bless you. Thank you once again, uh, uh, Apostle Newton, for this time to minister the word. Let's go straight into the word, the book of uh, First Samuel chapter number seven. I want to read from verse number eight. I just want to read this scripture, uh, this one scripture. The Bible says, so the children of Israel say to Samuel, do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistine. So the children of Israel said to Samuel, do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistine. I want to just share this morning. I know we are in different times on this evening, wherever you are, or this afternoon. I want to share on this matter that I've entitled Enforcing Prophetic Decrees. And I believe and I want us to understand that we are in a spiritual battle. And because we are in a spiritual battle, we need to come to a place where we begin to realign ourselves with the mindset and with the will of God. That when we begin to pray, we are no longer praying our mind, but we are beginning to enforce the mind of God over our situations and over our lives. Israel is in a spiritual battle. Yes, the enemy that is coming is a physical enemy. They are seeing the Philistine, but the battle that they are going through is beyond physical. This is a spiritual enemy that is, that, you know, that is hidden in the military mighty of the Philistine. And when the Israelites saw this thing, they were able to quickly interpret uh, that we cannot stand against this enemy in the physical. We need a spiritual or a divine intervention for us to come to a place uh, where we can defeat this enemy. That is why now they are engaging the prophet Samuel and they're saying, Samuel, Please speak to God on our behalf. Don't be silent to God. Cry unto God on our behalf. Why? Because the enemy we are dealing, yes, is coming in the physical realm, but we cannot defeat him from the physical realm. We first need to defeat him in the spirit. Because whatever we defeat in the spirit, we are able to defeat in the physical Whatever we are not able to defeat in the spirit, uh, we won't be able to defeat in the physical. Samuel, pray for us. In other words, engage the spiritual so that we can have a physical victory. We cannot walk in victory in the physical until we are able to walk in victory in the spirit. You cannot walk in healing in the physical until or before your healing is manifested in the spirit. So the first thing that you need to do is to engage God in the spirit. Then you can face your physical enemy. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, number, 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 verse number 10, for we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against the principality. In other words, Paul is saying, uh, I know our, 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 our battle is not a physical, but our battle is a spiritual. We wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but we are wrestling against the principalities. We are wrestling against the powers, against the rulers of darkness uh, of this age, against the spiritual hosts uh, of wickedness in high places. In other words, whatever we are seeing in the, in the physical, 
physical realm uh, is a direct result of what is happening in the spirit realm. So there are demonic you know, spirits, there are demonic entities uh, that are attacking you in the physical, but you don't need to engage in the physical. You need to engage in the spirit. Uh, because whatever you engage in the spirit, uh, you can align and you can begin to control it uh, from the spirit realm. You know, the Bible said they heard that the enemy was coming. They heard. They heard. You know, one thing I realized about the enemy, he, he makes sure that you hear something. A few years ago, we were living in another city before we came to here to the Tumtari. And, and, and our landlord came, I was not there that day. The landlord came and began to attack verbally and, and abuse my wife with words. When I came back from where I was, my wife began, she was crying. And I said, what is wrong? She began to say, the landlord was saying one, two, three, four, five things. You know what I did? I went up the mountain three weeks with God. I begin to, to engage God. You know, I did not focus on the landlord. Yes, I did not have the money to pay the rent. Yes, I did not have the money to pay the bills. But you know what I did? I did not engage the landlord. I went up the mountain and I begin to challenge God. I remember vividly as I begin to pray. I begin to say, God, the baboons around this mountain, they've got a place to stay. Yet I, your servant, I don't have a place to stay. The birds of the air, they've got a place to stay, yet I, your servant, I don't have a place to stay. You know, I begin to challenge God, and I tell you, after three weeks, after three weeks, God performed a supernatural divine miracle. I went to one of the land developers in our area, and I say, I want a piece of land, I want to buy. You know, at that time, I did not even have a single sender, but I'm saying to this guy, I want to buy a piece of land. You know, I did not have money. I have nothing else. You know, I have nothing. If I was failing to pay rent house, how was I going to buy a land or a piece of land? I say to this man, I want, you no, know, give me terms. And he looked at me and said, man of God, I will not give you terms. Go to the office and let them show you pieces of land. You can choose from there. I will give you for free. Why? Because I engaged the spirit realm. I engage the spirit realm and God begin to manifest it in the physical. You know, in three weeks, I had a piece of land. In two months, I, was, I moved from where I was staying and I was staying on my own land. Why? Because when you engage God in the spirit, he begin to move on your behalf. The Bible said the, the Israelites, they heard that the Philistines are coming. And the Bible say when they heard, they were afraid. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter number four, verse number 18, be careful how you hear. It doesn't matter what you hear, but what is more important is how you hear. You know, the Bible said they heard that the enemy is coming and instead of rising up in faith, they were afraid. The reason why the enemy wants you to hear certain things is so that the fear can be birthed in you. The moment the fear is, is, is birthed in you, it means the faith is no longer there. These people, they were afraid of what they heard. They did not see the enemy. They were afraid and they begin to make judgment based on what they heard. They made judgment based on what the enemy was whispering to them. Several times the enemy come and whisper. Several times the enemy come and speak to us. And, 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 and we begin to confuse you. He begin to sow seeds of doubt and disbelief in your mind. But I've come to tell you the Bible say, be careful how you hear. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what, you know, it doesn't matter what report they bring. But be careful how you hear what they say. Four years ago when we started uh, Waterbrook here in Mutare, this lady, she doesn't come to our church. I used to minister to her when she was still a youth. 
you know, she came to my wife after almost about a year and, and she was holding a baby. She says, when I heard that the man of God has come back into the city, my husband did not allow me to come to church. But I heard that you were doing a revival. I, I, I say to myself, I may not go to where they are doing it, but I'll go and stand outside. The moment I just hear the voice of the man of God, I know I'll conceive. And I tell you, she just came and stood outside where we were doing our revivals. And from there she conceived. Why? Because she heard the voice of God. And every form of barrenness that was within her was broken there and there. Why? Because she heard. What she had in the spirit uh, was able to turn around uh, what had been developing in her womb. Her womb, which was barren, her womb, uh, which was failing to conceive for years, uh, just because it had the voice of God, uh, the womb conceived, uh, and nine months down the line, uh, she's celebrating holding a baby. Why? Because she had. You have to be careful how you hear things. So many times you are hearing things uh, that brings uh, fear instead of faith. So many times you are hearing things uh, that brings doubt instead of belief. We begin to walk uh, under a shadow of unbelief. We begin to see ourselves as unable. When I look at this, at this particular scripture, the children of Israel, they are seeing themselves as unable, as unable to challenge the Philistines that are coming. Why? Because they had. But thank God for the prophet of God. Thank God for his servant who was connected to heaven, who began to engage the Lord of hosts in the spirit realm and begin to challenge the things that were happening in the physical. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but has given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy chapter number one, verse number 17. Fear is not of God. Every time you are afraid, it is not of God. Every time you walk in fear, you are not walking in faith. The Bible says in the book of James, the devil moves or walks about like a rolling lion. He is not a lion. He is moving like a rolling lion. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying this morning? He's moving like a rolling lion. The only power that he has is the power that we give to him. The devil does not have power. All power and all authority. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 28, all power and all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. So in other words, the only power that the devil has is the power that we give to him. We give him the power when we walk in faith. We give him the power when we walk in doubt. We give him the power when we begin to, 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 to no, when we begin to doubt God. We give the enemy power. He only derives the power we give to him. He doesn't have power. He walks about like a rolling lion. And the people are, of Israel are saying to Samuel, cease not to pray to God for us. Cease not to cry. In other words, begin to speak to God. Engage the supernatural. Ladies and gentlemen, prayer is going into the courts of heaven and begin to plead your case. The Bible say in the book of Isaiah 41, verse number 21, present your case, says the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, uh, says the king of kings. In other words, God is saying, uh, come into the courtroom of heaven uh, and begin to plead your case. Uh, begin to, 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 to speak your mind. Uh, be begin to reason with me. Have I not said whatever I've said in the word? Bring it into the courtroom and begin to stand before the king of glory and begin to argue your case, begin to argue, present your case and be justified. Why? Because you presented what you want before the Lord. You have power 
to allow certain things to happen in your life. Your power to control. The moment you get into the courtroom of heaven, you are able to control what happens in the physical. That's why when you read Matthew 18, verse 18 to 19, the Bible say, I shortly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth, it is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, it is loosened in heaven. The moment I get into the courtroom of heaven, I begin to rearrange the affairs of my life. The moment I get into the courtroom of heaven, I begin to dictate the affairs of my life. There are certain things I begin to, 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 to control as I engage God in the prayer room. There are certain things I begin to dictate as I engage God in the prayer room. The Israelites are saying, speak to God. In other words, engage your God. Speak to your God. Go and stand as a lawyer. Plead our case. We have left our idols. We have given our hearts to God. We have removed our sins from before us. Plead to your God for our sake. In other words, go into the courtroom of heaven and hear what the Spirit of God is saying and come down on earth and begin to enforce whatever you had in the courtroom of heaven. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying this morning. When, when I pray and I get into the courtroom of heaven, I begin to hear the Spirit of God whispering. And as I begin to hear the voice of God, as I begin to pick and as I begin to connect to the voice of God, I come back into the physical and I begin to enforce whatever I heard in the courtroom of God, whatever God was whispering to me. When I come back in the physical, I stand on my ground and I begin to enforce whatever the spirit of God was saying to me. The Bible say, he who searches the mind, no what the spirit of God says and as I connect with my God he begin to speak to me whatever I hear I stand on the altar I begin to enforce every word that I heard in the spirit realm I begin to dictate whatever I heard in the spirit realm. That's why when you read the book of Job chapter number 22, the Bible says you shall pray and I will answer. You pay your vows and you declare a thing and it shall be established. What is he saying? When you pray and you hear what is being said in the spirit realm, Come down with what has been told, with what you have been told in the spirit realm and begin to dictate it, begin to speak it. A certain lady a few months ago came to me. She, she texted me and said, man of God, every time I get pregnant, sometimes at seven months, my, 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 the, 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 the pregnancy comes off. You know, sometimes the baby comes out, but he dies. And she says, now I am pregnant. And I say to her, that baby, you shall hold it. It doesn't matter how many babies you have lost, but that one you shall hold it. Why? Because I am now in Catching God, I say to God, God, you say you, you, you children are a blessing from above, and this blessing shall not die. A few months ago, we went to see the baby. You know why? Because we enforced prophetic decrees. We begin to declare in the spirit atmosphere. She had been told by a certain person that you will never hold that your baby in your hand. And I stood up as a servant of God. And I say, I don't care what you were told, but I know the God that I save. The God that I say says, if you serve me diligently, I'll bless your bread and I'll bless your water. I'll bless the fruit of your womb. Woman, this baby you shall hold. It doesn't matter what has been said, but I stand as a prophet of God. I enforce whatever has been said by God and whatever God has said, it shall come to pass. Now that the baby is there, because we enforced 
The Bible says, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard. What the Lord no entered into the hearts of men, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed to us through his spirits. For the spirit is such as all things. Yes, the deep things of God. First Corinthians chapter number two, verse nine to 10. But the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. When you engage God in his courtroom, he begins to whisper. He begins to say things. He, he begins to reveal certain things. He begins to show you certain things about your life. And as he begins to show you things about your life, you need now to take those things and begin to declare them before the enemy. I remember one day, I read a book about divine healing. And this man of God says, I don't want to be sick. The greatest miracle is not being healed, but the greatest miracle is not to be sick. You know, I picked that word in the spirit. You know, it began to do something in my spirit. I stood before God, I said, God, I don't want to be, you know, under sickness. No pain, no sickness shall become my portion. I begin to walk with that word. I begin, you know, when you come into our house, you don't find, and you know, the only thing that you can find maybe are painkillers here and there, but, but, but you don't find anything. You don't find any medication. Does it mean we don't believe in medication? No, we believe in it, but there's no need for it. Why? Because we have a prophetic word that we are enforcing over our lives. Every time pain comes, we enforce that word. Every time sickness comes, we enforce that word. And we begin to stand upon that word and enforce it in our lives. The devil has no power. The devil has no option but to take heed of the enforced word. Because the Bible says in the book of Psalms, I have highly exalted my word above my name. In other words, God has highly honored his word. Enforce whatever God has said to you. Stand in prayer and begin to speak those things to manifestation. I know that in these 21 days, God is, you know, God is dropping words. God is revealing things. You need to stand up now and begin to take those words that the Lord is giving you and begin to enforce them in your life. Certain things will only go when you begin to speak. Samuel ceased not to speak for us. Only kings, only kings are allowed to make decrees. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Only kings have authority to make a decree. And no matter how bad, and no matter how upside down the decree is, as long as the king has uttered that decree, that decree is established. And the Bible is saying from the book of Revelation, uh, chapter number five, verse number 10, uh, he has made us kings and priests uh, to yes. our God. Yes. Yes, and we on. shall reign on earth on. with Christ. Yes. Yes, is someone on. hearing what I'm saying? Yes, the Bible is saying he has made us kings. And only kings have got the authority to make and enforce a decree. You and I, we have, been, you know, we have been anointed to enforce decrees in our lives. We have been empowered by reason of the cross to begin to enforce prophetic decrees. Not only are you a king, but the Bible says he has made us a priest. In other words, you carry a prophetic anointing. You carry a kingly anointing that you can begin to decree things and the devil will move. A king has the authority to change laws. A king has the authority to reverse things. And you and I, we have been made kings, 
That's why the Bible is saying, whatever you bind on earth, it is bound in heaven. What is he saying? By divine protocol, God waits on you to decree things so that he can begin to, inf to, to, to make them happen on earth. God is waiting for your decree. Because you are a king, because you are a prophet, you carry the anointing to make decrees. You carry the anointing to change laws. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God reveal this to you. You carry the grace to change laws. You carry the grace to, 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 to change the decrees. It doesn't matter what has been said over your life. You carry the grace to change it and to reverse it. Why? Because you are a king by the blood and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There is no word that has been established in the spirit realm that has got power over my life. I stand as a prophet of God and I can reverse every judgment. That's why the Bible say no weapon that is formed against you shall prevail. And the Bible say we shall refute every word that rises in condemnation. What is he saying? We shall reverse whatever the enemy has said over your life. Every word that have been sent to attack you. The Bible say you are a king. You can, inf you, know, you, you can enforce a decree to reverse whatever judgment that is against your life. The king of this earth has no power. Why? Because you and I, we carry an anointing from above. We carry the authority from above where we can begin to enforce what we hear in the courtroom of heaven. When you read Matthew 21, verse number 21, the Bible says, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree. Jesus came to a fig tree expecting to find fruits, but he found none. Guess what he did? He said from today, right now, let no fruits, let no one pick fruit from you again. There and there, the tree dried. Why? Because the tree had the, you know, because the, 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 the words of Jesus had the capacity to go deeper even into the roots and dry the tree from the roots. And I want to tell you something, church. You carry an anointing that dries every word of the enemy. You carry an anointing that dries every planting of the enemy. That's why the Bible say you shall uproot, you, 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 you shall bring down, you shall break down. Why? Because you carry an anointing that has the authority to deal with the things that are in the root system of your life. Whatever is rooted in your life, that is not of God. I stand as a man of God. Let it drive from today. Whatever has been planted in your marriage, that is not of God. Let it dry today. Whatever has been planted in your body, that is not of God. Let it dry today. The following day, the disciples, they come to the fig tree. They are, they are surprised by what is happening. But Jesus is not surprised. Listen to me. You know, the, the, sometimes so many people around you are surprised by what is happening in your life. But because you have said it, you, you are not surprised. Why? Because that is the result that you were expecting. The moment I say be healed, I only get surprised if you are not healed. Why? Because I'm expecting healing from you. So if you don't get healed, I am surprised. I'm saying, God, what has happened? Why? Because you have not confirmed your word. Jesus looks at the disciples. Chapter 21. He looks at the disciples and he says, if you have faith, 
and do not doubt. You will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. Which mountain is he talking about? Is he speaking about a physical mountain? No, 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 no. He, you know, he has moved away from a physical mountain. He's talking about spiritual things now that are standing before you as mountains. That's why the Bible says when you read the book of Zechariah, who art thou, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall be made into a plain. And Jesus is saying, you can say to this mountain, what mountain is he talking about? He's talking about the thing that have elevated themselves against your life, the things that have risen up against your, your life, the things that have taken a high place in your life, you can say to this mountain, be thou moved and be cast into the sea and the mountain will be removed. You can say to the mountain of sickness, be removed. You can say to the mountain of poverty, be removed. You can say to the mountain of depression, be removed. You can say to the mountain of blood pressure, be removed. You can speak to your mountain. You can begin to enforce what you have heard in the spirit. And the Bible in Isaiah 44, verse number 26, he says he confirms the word of his servants. He performs the counsel of his messengers. In other words, the moment he say, mountain be moved, the mountain is no right but to be moved. The mountain is no right but to give heed to the voice of the spirits. A few years ago, by the spirit, God said to me, there's a woman here that, that, is good in, 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 you know, that, that, that goes under asthmatic attack. Uh, the moment I say those words, uh, the, the woman began to manifest, uh, you know, she, 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 she had an attack right there in the church. And that was the last attack she ever had in her life. Uh, why? Because I stood up, uh, I enforced what I had in the spirits. When you begin to hear the voice of the spirit in your life, you can begin to dictate things in the physical realm. Your prayers begin to change. Why? Because you are no longer just speaking things, but you are beginning to enforce what you have heard in the spirit. When you read the book of Matthew, chapter number eight, verse number eight, the centurion said to Jesus, speak your word and your servant will be made well. In other words, enforce healing that you see in the spirit realm. Let it be enforced upon my servant, and my servant will be made well. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever is spoken out of faith has no fruits. Whatever you declare outside of faith, it does not come to pass. But whatever you speak in faith, it comes to pass. That's why when you read the book of Romans, uh, the Bible says, whatever is not of faith, uh, it is sin. In other words, uh, whatever you speak, but outside uh, the, 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 the parameters of faith, uh, God has no right uh, to fulfill those words. Why? Because the Bible says, without the faith, uh, it is impossible to please God. What is God waiting for? He's waiting for men and women uh, that understand that they've carried the, uh, the anointing uh, to enforce things uh, and begin uh, to speak those things uh, in faith. It is time to enforce decrees in your life. It is time to change the laws over your life. It is time to dictate what must happen in your life. Why? Because you carry the kingly anointing. Samuel, speak to God on our behalf. Samuel, speak to your God on our behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, you carry the power of God. And I've come to tell you that no matter what has been happening in your life, you carry the anointing 
to begin to change things around you. You carry the grace to begin to dictate what must happen. Whatever you allow in your life, it is allowed in heaven. Whatever you allow to happen in your marriage, it is allowed in heaven. You carry the grace. You carry the grace. It's time to stand up and begin to dictate things in your life. We have been crying for too long. We have been mourning for too long. But it's time to stand up on our place and begin to sell the devil to match off our in our lives. It's time that we stand upon our place and upon our position and take up our we our weapons and begin to dictate into the spirit realm and begin to control the affairs of our lives. Sickness have no place in your life because the Bible say you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Wherever you get sick, wherever the enemy brings sickness in your life, you need to stand upon the word and begin to enforce it over your life. Begin to enforce it over your children. Our children cannot be drug addicts. Why? Because the Bible say you bless the fruit of our wombs. Whatever the Lord, the Lord has blessed. The enemy has no power to kiss. Our marriages are blessed from above. The enemy has no power to kiss them. All you need to do is to stand on your position as a prophet of God and begin to enforce. You can make laws. You can create your own heaven here on earth. That's why the Bible says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You can live in heaven, but yet you are on earth. You can walk in heaven, yet you are living on earth. The affairs of your life begin to be controlled by heaven, not earth. You know, you, you begin to live according to the economies of heaven, not according to the economies of the earth. Yes, because of the crisis around us, uh, the, the, the monetary system is crumbling. Uh, but because you are a child of God, uh, in the season when the monetary system uh, all over the globe is crumbling, uh, you begin to rise. Uh, why? Because you are living according uh, to the dictates of heaven, not according to the dictates of this world. You begin to walk in healing. You begin to walk in health. Why? Because you are not living according to the dictates of this earth. The Bible said the desire of the Lord is your healing. The desire of the Lord is that you, you know, as, as you prosper in your body, as you prosper financially, you must also prosper physically. In other words, you be in good health. So you begin to live in heaven, yet you are on earth. You, you begin to walk in health as even as you are walking on earth. In a time of this great pandemic, the heavens begin <coughs> to overshadow you. The heavens begin to cover you by his grace. And whatever arrow of sickness the enemy throws at you, it has no power. And you begin to enforce it over your life. You begin to enforce it over your children. You begin to enforce it over your house. I have a favorite scripture that I always pray every time. Psalms chapter 91. It says, no plague shall come near you in your tents. No evil shall enter your dwelling place. No evil shall enter your dwelling place. No sickness shall come in your house. In other words, the devil is not allowed. The enemy is not allowed to come near you or near me. Why? Because of that word. Tonight, even as I close, you can speak the same word and things can begin to happen in your life. You can begin to dictate what the Lord 
has spoken to you and see it come to pass in your life. You can begin to speak things. I remember 2007, 2006, I stood up in church. At that time, I was a very young, young pastor, younger than what I am today. You know, I begin to say to the church, I'm going to drive cars which I don't pay for. I'm going to live in houses which I don't buy. You know, everyone in church should begin to laugh. But listen to me, nine years, 10 years down the line, God begin to fulfill those things. Why? Because every word that you utter, it must be fulfilled. It must be confirmed. People, they laughed. But I begin to drive cars which I never put a cent on. You know why? Because whatever has been declared in the spirit, it must be manifested in the physical. And today I stand as a servant of God. Whatever the enemy has decreed over your life, I declare and I decree that it has no power and it has no authority over your life. I reverse every word in the atmosphere. I, I, I dictate a word that changes your life, that transforms your life. In Jesus' name, every generational case that have been declared from generation to generation and that have been carried from generation to generation, I stand as a servant of God. I break his power today. I declare and I decree a new day in your life. I declare and I decree a new order in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Sickness, I command you by the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ. Sickness, I command you. Every form of sickness, hear the word of the Lord. Every form of sickness, hear the voice of the Spirit. I command you by the power of the blood to disappear from the body of God's people in the name of Jesus Christ. I stand as a servant of God. Whatever reports that you carry from the doctor, I stand as a servant of God. We don't believe the report of the doctor. We stand upon the report from above. He says, when the son of man have set you free, you are free indeed. I declare freedom from bondage over your life. I declare freedom from sickness over your life. I declare freedom in your marriage in the name of Jesus. I declare freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I thank you for you are here. Holy Spirit, I honor you. My God, for you are moving, Lord, even in every home. You are moving, Holy Spirit, in every individual's lives. You are beginning to reveal that you are a God that establish the word of your people. I give you praise this day. I give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and I thank you. Amen and amen. amen. May God bless you so much. May God bless you. May God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. Wow, what a word. What a word. The spirit of God is still moving right here. Thank you, Pastor Cosmos. My goodness, my goodness. I still want to invite us. Let's bless this man. Let's bless this man of God. Let's bless him. Let's bless him. Let's bless him. There is a, there is a blessing when it comes when you learn how to, to sow in the time of prayer and fasting. There's a blessing to do that. I, I challenge you. I challenge you. We've had so many testimonies last week, actually, on that financial breakthroughs we've had so many in jesus name i challenge you let's bless them let's just bless these people they've been sowing to us we've been shouting we've been clapping and some of us have been so encouraged let, let us learn to respond to the word of god i challenge you to do that in jesus name oh my god what an anointing thank you so much pastor cosmos may god re refresh you may god continue to use you this is just but a beginning